Hey everybody, can you believe it's almost Christmas? Holy cow, I can't believe how fast the year is gone. I just wanted to bop in quick today. Um, I found myself all kind of in a fuss this morning running around trying to get all of the odds and ends done that are added on to the normal to-do list this time of year. I was trying to wrap, wrap gifts and think about all the things I haven't yet done or I haven't yet gotten, who I've forgotten on the Christmas list. And then I stopped long enough to realize, gosh, I wasn't thinking anything about the real reason behind the season and the hustle and bustle and commercialization of Christmas. I think it's important that we stop and think about what we are truly celebrating with the production we often make of Christmas, the shopping, the decorating, the busyness. It really looks nothing like that first Christmas. I found myself thinking about the way in which Jesus, our Savior, the Son of God, entered this world. It was not with all the fuss, the pomp, and the circumstance that he most certainly would be deserving of. The King of Kings, the Savior of the world, came to the earth in the most humble of ways. Today I wanted to talk about the humble beginnings of our mighty Savior, what that says about the heart of our God, and why it is symbolic of the way in which we are meant to live and to lead this side of heaven. Are you feeling exhausted, burned out, and unfulfilled in your leadership? Do you struggle with perfectionism and people-pleasing? Do you find yourself left with no time or energy to care for yourself and your family? Hey friend, welcome to the Grace-Filled Leader Podcast. I'm Tanya, wife, mom, leader, and Jesus lover. For years, I tried to find success and worthiness the world's way only to feel overwhelmed, anxious, and unfulfilled. It wasn't until I surrendered my life and leadership that I truly found freedom. I discovered that we can be effective, purpose-driven leaders while living a life of peace and abundance. In this podcast, we're going to walk through practical solutions for doing life and leadership God's way. If you want to find fulfillment and lead with purpose, If you want to escape the chaos and find peace, if you want to find the freedom to live the life you were called to, this podcast is for you. Unbutton your blazers, sister friends. It's time to dig in. As we look at the birth of Jesus, it certainly isn't what you'd expect for the one who, who would become the savior of the world, the Messiah, literally God with us. It was, however, just as it had been prophesied some 700 years earlier by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah, speaking into the future, said, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And Jesus' birth was also a promise made to Joseph. An angel had appeared and told Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, And she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Throughout the Bible, there were references to this king who would come to rescue and restore God's people. But somehow, the arrival of this king was a rather quiet event, unnoticed by many. He came to us as a small, helpless, vulnerable baby, born to two young parents of lower social status, in a barn, basically, and with a feed trough for his bed. The first to be told of the Savior's birth were a bunch of lowly shepherds. The whole thing was bathed in humility. Likewise, Jesus' life on earth 
was a humble life. Like us, he experienced temptation from Satan. He felt hunger and thirst. He endured struggles. He was often misunderstood and rejected. But while he experienced every kind of pain and struggle that we experience as human beings, he remained sinless. Yet, he willingly accepted the mission for which he was sent. The ultimate sacrifice on behalf of mankind. He paid the price. Even though he was sinless, he paid the price for our sin and disobedience. So really the humble nature of Jesus' birth was a foreshadowing of the even greater humility that was yet to come when Jesus willingly accepted an execution that was designed to bring about the most suffering and to be the most humiliating of deaths. Crucifixion was actually an extremely shameful death reserved for the worst kind of criminals in the Roman Empire. So why was Jesus' birth, life, and death one of such humility? He could have arrived in splendor, with celebration you might think worthy of a king. He could have come in and taken control of the world. But that's not what he did. Because that's not what the world needed. We needed a Savior who, while being divine in nature, humbled himself to become flesh and blood and experience the life and struggles of man. We needed a Savior who could be presented with all the same temptations but remain blameless, thus offering the ultimate in sacrifices, taking the punishment we were deserving of and that he was not. When we talk about following Jesus today, what we can learn from Jesus' birth, life, and death is that following him will mean a path of humility. Jesus' humble birth gives us a picture of God's heart. Jesus exemplified humility, and God wants us to have a heart like Jesus. Humility glorifies God. To live a life in which we follow Jesus' example we must be prepared to sacrifice our own comfort, our own honor and prestige in exchange for a life lived in sacrifice and service to God and others. Even the examples we see in Joseph and Mary paint a picture of God's heart. Mary had to be shocked and concerned to think about being unmarried knowing she had not betrayed her fiancé but was carrying a child of immaculate conception. Yet she was faithful. She was faithful in her duty to bear the Son of God, raise him as her own, but later watch him die a horrible death to fulfill his mission of saving the world from their sins. And in Joseph we see a man of integrity, Upon hearing that his wife-to-be was pregnant with a child that wasn't his own, he was first prepared to end his engagement in a quiet way that would not bring shame to Mary. But then God sent a messenger to Joseph to confirm Mary's story of a conception by the Holy Spirit. And then he was faithful in obeying the call to be Jesus' earthly father and Mary's husband, even though it had to pose many consequences, and many questions. In Mary and Joseph, we see that God honors faithfulness and integrity. So if we as Christians seek to grow more Christ-like and live an example we see of Jesus in the Bible and, and of the characters like Mary and Joseph and the qualities they exemplify that God honors, that suggests that we are to seek to live lives that demonstrate humility faithfulness and integrity. I'll be the first to say it's not always easy to remain Christ-centered in living or leading. As humans, we tend to seek comfort and control, and we easily fall into the trap of self-promotion. Sadly, as Christians, we often struggle to follow his example. In recognizing that I stumble on my Christian walk, 
I wanted to close today with just a prayer for humility. Lord Jesus, thank you for humbling yourself, becoming human, first as a tiny baby born in a barn. Thank you for your willingness to enter our world in a way that was so vulnerable and humble. You know, Lord, that I struggle with demonstrating humility sometimes. I often want to be right or I want to control life circumstances. I don't always have the desire to serve, to put others before myself, and to reject my own desire for glory, comfort, attainment. Please forgive me. I want to follow you, Jesus. Help me to choose your way of living, to care about others over myself. Help me to serve as you serve, giving all glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, friends, I wish you a very Merry Christmas filled with love, laughter, and gratitude. I pray this episode blessed you, spoke to you, or encouraged you in some way. If so, please share it with a friend and head on over to Apple Podcasts to leave me a review. That's the only way for me to know if you are enjoying the show. Nothing blesses me more than to hear from you. Also, come on over to our free community, the Grace Filled Leader Facebook group. This is a great place for us to support one another on our faith and leadership journey. Now to Him who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us. Ephesians 3.20 Until next time, God bless you, friend.